Hello, this is question 8 from the Cambridge International Education Exams from Winter 2019. It's paper 2-2. You can find a link to an image of the question in the description below and I recommend you try the question first before looking at my solution. I've wrote most of the important information here but part 1 of the question asks us to express this, um, this, these two terms here in the form of this one term here, or cosine theta plus alpha. They also tell us, let me write that in, that or is bigger than zero, and that alpha is between 90 and zero degrees. And they ask us to find alpha um, to the nearest two decimal places. Okay, so this is a quite common question in the exams, something that looks like that. And it's, it's gonna be very similar how to do it each time. What we need to do is play around with this one here. There's a fairly form, famous formula for when we have cosine of two angles, how to um, extract them, how to um, break them apart. And that's this, uh, let's see, cosine of any two angles, let's write it out uh, how you'd find it in your formulas or your formula book. Well, that's always gonna be equal to the cosine of each angle or cos cosine of the angle times cosine of the other angle minus a sine of the first angle multiplied by sine of the second angle. Let me just double check that. Yeah, that looks right. Now there's four formulas, depending if it's um, cosine or sine, and then whether it's a plus or a minus. Or you could say there's two formulas, because we really don't care if it's a plus or a minus. We can learn how to deal with that another way. Okay, so if we apply that to this term here, it will actually look a lot like this term. That's how I know to do it. So when I apply that to here, I'll get a cosine theta. Here's a cosine theta. I'll also get minus a sine alpha, a sine theta. Here's a sine, minus sine a theta. So that's gonna be very useful. So let's apply this to this formula here. Uh, let's see, or cosine theta plus alpha is equal to, or is the one difference, or we'll have to multiply both of them. Um, or times cosine the angle, cosine alpha, uh, let's see, minus or sine theta sine alpha. Yeah, okay, now that might not look like it's done you any favors, but really this looks very similar to this now, if you, if you believe me. It has cosine theta multiplied by something. Has cosine theta multiplied by something. In this case, the something 0 0.5 is just equal to this something or um, cosine alpha. If, if this is true, they're the same. Um, as long as this one matches up as well, and it does, uh, on this one, 1 1.2 just needs to equal or sine alpha, and it matches up quite nicely then. So all we have to do is solve this, and there's two things we don't know, or and alpha, so that's just a simple thing as equations. There's actually a very nice way to solve this. Let me do it to more, um, the more algebraic way first. Uh, let me use numbers first to solve the uh, simultaneous equation to solve it first. And then I'll show you the prettier, probably a little easier way to solve it. Um, so for, you just need to put this together. I would, I would decide to divide them um, because then the ors would disappear and sine and cosine when they divide, they turn into tangents. So that's one way I would do it. I take this line here and go or sine alpha divided by or cosine alpha is equal to 1.2 divided by 0 0.5. And this all fixes itself very easily. Or cancel, we get tangent of alpha is equal 1.2 divided by 0 0.5. Simply put that, uh, solve this with a calculator, and uh, we get alpha is equal to the inverse tangent 1.2 over 0 0.5, and a calculator will give us that answer, 67.38, um, that's degrees. Um, and yeah, then to get, uh, to get or, we simply put this number back into either one of these you want, and we, we solve for or. But um, I'll, I'll actually solve or a different way, because uh, we didn't have to do this. We could have solved or first, in a very interesting and pretty way. Um, this is a cosine is equal to, yeah, let me rub these ors out, is equal to this divided by or, and this divided by or. That's a pretty famous formula. It's sine is equal 
opposite over a uh, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is e equal adjacent over hypotenuse. The cosines and the sines all match. The hypotenuse all match. This we can actually make a triangle out of this. If this is an angle here, if uh, now this takes a little getting used to to do this. Sine the opposite. 1.2, the adjacent would be 0 0.5, and the hypotenuse would be or. Everything works to make these into a triangle. Now, I don't know how big the triangle is, um, but I can certainly work out the angles. Well, if I use this size, I can use these angles. This, this triangle might not exist anywhere. I don't see any reason it does, but it's a great way to solve for or. Because then we can just use that this is a right angle here. And solve for or. Or is or becomes or squared is equal 0 0.5 squared plus 1.2 squared, or or is equal to the square root of this. And again, we put that in a calculator, we get the square root of 1.69, which is equal to um, 1.3. I did this in a calculator, I can't do that in my head, I promise. Um, and then with with if you find or this way, you can figure out what alpha is. We already did alpha. If you find alpha this way, you can figure out what or is. But we already did or. So that's two different ways. I wouldn't expect a student to do both ways. I'd expect them to do one way and fill it into the formula to get the other. This one's probably the easiest and prettiest and nicest. Anyway, that answers our question. To two decimal places, they wanted the angle and the length actually turns out perfect. This length turns out to be perfectly 1.3. So that's why they didn't tell us how many decimal places. That was a little clue in the question, actually. Okay, let me rope uh, most of this out, and um, I'll do part two. I, I, I want to keep these numbers here, because these numbers are going to be important for part two. Okay, part two of the question asks us to solve this. Um, if, this if this formula, if this, um, these two terms equal 0 0.8, solve for theta, and they, and when theta is between 0 and 360. So that's what they want to solve. This first line, I have wrote this second line in. This was the answer to part one. And uh, the fact that they said hence, hence solve, that was given a clue. That was a clue to use part one. So here's part one. Part one said that this is the same as this. They, we wrote this in, this in this way. Well then, let's not do their question. Let's do our question. Let's do what we found, 0 0.8. This is going to be much easier to solve. So all we need to do is rearrange this a little bit. We get cosine theta plus 67.38 is equal 0 0.8 over 1.3. Um, I can go ahead and solve this as zero, uh, theta plus 67.38. If I get the inverse cosine of both sides, the inverse cosine of 0 0.8 over 1.3, that gives me an answer, let me see, uh, 52.02. Now with one problem though with this, because that gives me one answer. The problem is I happen to know there's loads of answers. Uh, cosine looks like this, it says going on like this. Um, so where we have, here we had a cosine. Is a normal cosine equals, what's that? That's about, uh, I'm not sure what that is, probably about 0 0.6. Here's a, somewhere around here. So there's the answer the calculator gave us, 52, 52 degrees. The problem is there's many other answers. There's uh, another answer, there's lots of different answers. And the fact is, in these questions, we're gonna use a lot of these answers. So let me write this again here, 52.02. That's this answer. But you know what, just as good is this answer here, minus 52.02, and just as good is this answer up, and that is uh, 307.98. Uh, the next number here would be 412.02, and you can stay going on, and you can stay going this way. No, you don't have to, you, can, you get used to the ones you need, but I see lots of students just use this one, and maybe this one. In, in this question, that's actually wrong, because uh, that's this number. What they're asking for is theta is equal to some number here. Let's say, no, let me put in all these numbers like this, and uh, minus 67.38. So these aren't the answers. We have to take 67.38 away from them all. 
So let me let me do that. Uh, Sixty-seven point three eight away from this is. I don't really care. It's a hundred minus one hundred and twenty or so. It's not. It's not within uh, the the question asked us between. Theta was between zero and three sixty. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I said. So I certainly don't want minus one hundred and twenty. How about this one? Fifty two minus sixty seven. No, that's out as well. Uh, so it's, the answer is going to come from this guy. 307 minus 67 is 240.6. And 412, although it looked like it was too big, lots of students would have ignored it. No, once you take 67 away, it becomes an answer. Uh, 344.64. The next number then is somewhere over here off the screen. It's too big, so it's not going to be part of the answer. And all these numbers are too small. They're not going to be part of the answer. So uh, there's our two answers. That's um, both the answers to this question. They asked, they didn't give us any decimal places, so I've just given uh, these numbers here. I guess as standard, it's three significant places. So 241 would be okay, and, two, and 345, I guess, would be okay. But anyway, there we go, there's part two. Um, I'll rub this out and I'll do part three. Okay, part three gives just this here and asks us to find um, the greatest and least possible values. Now that's the maximum and the minimum. So a lot of students might try to differentiate this. I think, uh, yeah, I think they should be able to differentiate, uh, to differentiate that, but still, it's a lot of work that you don't actually need to do. And you'll actually have a difficult question when you finish it to solve it. Um, because this didn't come out of nowhere. They gave us this because it actually looks just like this if you if you look carefully. Forget the tree. The tree is not part of it. But this is one cosine. Minus one cosine, in fact. Um, that's a half. Okay, not quite the same. This is 2.4 instead of 1.2. It's twice as big. This is twice as big. So this is actually just the same as 3 minus 2 multiplied by... This guy here, the one we started with, the one we understand a lot about. Instead of the one we started with, how about we use this new one? So it's a 1.3 cosine theta plus 67.38. Um, so, oh, squared still, let's uh, square the whole thing. Now that actually helps us a lot. Again, if you know what you're looking for. One, you could differentiate this and it's a little easier. That'd be one thing you could do. But then just noticing that we actually know a lot about cosines. Cosines, we know a lot about how big and small they get. The biggest they get is one, and the smallest they get is minus one. This one's multiplied by 1.3 though. So the biggest it gets is 1.3, and the smallest it gets is minus 1.3. If they're asking us what the biggest this number is and the smallest this number is, well, this is the hardest part of it. This is just three and a two. So now I know that the largest number I could get, um, let's see, we're multiplying by minus two, so let me be careful. I guess I would like the smallest number then, the most minus number I get out of this. To multiply it by minus two will give me a real big number. So let's see, three minus two multiplied by minus 1.3. That should be the max, uh, let's see, and especially when we square that, uh, because I'm happy to get a nice minus number, um, but no, that should be the max there, and the next one would be three minus two, 1.3, and that should give me a nice a minimum. You can go ahead and multiply this out. I've, already, I've gone and done it here, but if we have just a think about it, um, yeah, actually, let me write this more. Let's see, 2 times 1.3 is 2.6, plus 2.6, two minuses. So this becomes 5.6 squared. Uh, this guy here is uh, minus 2.6, so that becomes 0 0.4. So that's the smallest number we get and the largest number we get. So I've multiplied these out for us. Uh, it's 31.36. And this guy is 0 0.16. Uh, three significant figures, so it's perfectly okay to leave your answer at 31.4. But I think that, yeah, I'm nearly sure they accept that. Especially because it's exact like that. 
So that's how you answer that question. You didn't have to differentiate. That's why there's only three marks for it. Even though lots of students might have answered this and done lots of work. Um, you just need to realize that when you're dealing with trigonomic functions, we, we understand them very much so in their range. We know how big they get and how small they get. The maximum they can get. We'd have to be a little careful if we were dividing or something because maybe zero matters then. But no, in this case, it's just adding on a, a number multiplied by it. So uh, we can just, we can very well understand this because we can understand the cosine. Okay, if you have any questions about any of that, um, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a good day.